It's Sunday and the children have taken out their new puzzle. Let's watch them solve the puzzle. It looks like some animal. Picture puzzles are interesting. Every little piece has its own place in the puzzle and is an essential building unit, just as cells are to living organisms. The cell is the fundamental unit of life and it has its job cut out so that the organism may live. There, the puzzle is almost done. Oh, it's a panda. Well done. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to list the scientists involved in the discovery of the cell. Describe the working of a compound microscope. Describe the microscopic examination of a plant cell. Describe the microscopic examination of an animal cell. Compare the shape of the cell to its function. Define and identify unicellular and multicellular organisms. Define and identify prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And describe the structure of a bacterial cell. Hi, I'm the great builder. Nobody knew me until my good friend, Mr. Hook, spotted me through a microscope and gave me a name. Living organisms know me better as cell. Does that ring a bell? You'll soon know more about me. The discovery of cells dates back to the 17th century and is associated with the invention of microscopes. Marcello Malpighi, a microscopist, proposed that plants are made of tiny structural units called utricles. In 1665, Robert Hooke, an English scientist, looked at a thin slice of cork through a compound microscope. He observed many tiny, hollow, room-like structures that resembled a honeycomb and call them cells. Hook actually saw only the outer cell walls because cork cells are not alive. Leeuwenhoek in 1674 with the improved microscope discovered free living cells in pond water for the first time. Robert Brown in 1831 discovered the nucleus in the cell. Perkinier in 1839 coined the term protoplasm for the fluid substance of the cell. Two biologists, Schleiden in 1838 and Schwann in 1839 proposed the cell theory that all plants and animals are composed of cells. Rudolf Ferko in 1855 further expanded the cell theory by saying omnis cellula e cellula, which means all cells arise from pre-existing cells. All living organisms are made of cells. Cell is derived from the Latin word cellula, which means a little room. Plant and animal cells are too small and visible only under a microscope. So, without the microscope, you would have never known me. That's why I consider the microscope to be one of the greatest inventions of mankind. Let's see how a compound microscope works. The specimen to be observed is placed on a glass slide. The slide is then placed on the stage under an objective piece in the middle of the microscope. The light reflected from the mirror passes onto the object. From the eyepiece, a magnified image of the specimen can be seen. 
the side knobs are turned to get a sharper image. Let's do a microscopic examination of a plant cell. Now, this is going to be fun. Here's an onion. We'll begin by cutting it into halves. Peel off the thin inner layer using forceps. Spread the thin peel on the glass slide. Put a drop of water on it. Add a drop of iodine solution to it. Place a cover slip on it. Tap gently with a needle on the cover slip to remove air bubbles. Place the slide on the stage of the microscope. Small chamber-like structures called cells can be observed. Each cell contains a prominent vacuole, nucleus and cytoplasm. That onion cell looked like me, didn't it? But who do we have here? We shall look at an animal cell now. Let's begin with an ice cream spoon. Scrape the inside of your cheek using this spoon. Spread the collected mass in a drop of water on a glass slide. Add a drop of methylene blue. Place a cover slip on it. Now let's observe the cells under the microscope. Look! These cells have darkly stained spherical nuclei at their center. The shape of a cell is related to the specific function it performs. Cells like amoeba change their shapes for motility. Cells like nerve cells have a fixed shape that suits their function of transmitting nerve impulses. The development of the microscope led to the discovery of single and multiple celled organisms. Organisms like amoeba, chlamydomonas, paramecium and bacteria have single cells which constitute the whole organism. These organisms are called unicellular organisms. On the other hand, in organisms like fungi, plants and animals, multiple cells group together to form tissues. These organisms are called multicellular organisms. Do you know how living organisms perform the basic functions of their body? Living organisms perform the basic functions through division of labor between different organs. Yeah, different cells have different jobs allotted to them and we all work as a team for the body to function. All functions within a unicellular organism are carried out by the single cell itself. For example, in amoeba, a single cell is responsible for movement, intake of food, exchange of gases and excretion. On the other hand, different organs perform different functions in multicellular organisms. For example, the human body has a heart to pump blood, a stomach to digest food, and kidneys to excrete waste. Living organisms are also classified as prokaryotes and eukaryotes based on the organization of cellular structure. Prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that do not have a nuclear membrane and membrane-bound organelles. For example, bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotes are characterized by membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. Eukaryotes can be unicellular, such as trypanosoma, 
euglena, paramecium, or multicellular such as fungi, plants, and animals. Hey, here's a bacteria that is actually prokaryote. Let's take a closer look at it. The cell wall is a non-living layer composed of polysaccharides and proteins. The plasma membrane is a living membrane made of lipids. It is selectively permeable. Hence, it transports ions, nutrients and wastes across the membrane. The cytoplasm is a clear, thick, jelly-like material that forms the seat for all the cell functions. Let's take a closer look at the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm contains the nucleoid, ribosome and flagella. The nucleoid is a single large circular DNA molecule confined to the central region. It regulates all the functions of the cell. Ribosome transfers the genetic message into proteins. Flagella are appendages responsible for motility. Let's see the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic DNA is not bounded by a membrane called nucleoid. Eukaryotic DNA is bounded by a nuclear membrane. Prokaryote has a single circular DNA, while eukaryote has DNA in paired chromosomes. Prokaryotes do not have vacuoles, while eukaryotes do have vacuoles, 